time I'm gonna run you through how I'm gonna go about chop carbon fiber skinning my entire Z-Tune front bumper. There ain't too many videos about this showing the entire process, so I'll do my best to give you a proper rundown on how this should be done. I've spent a long time debating and trying to figure out what way I wouldn't do this, and I've now settled on a sort of hybrid laminating process between uh, regular carbon fiber skinning as well as vacuum bagging. The issue with regular carbon fiber skinning methods is that the flakes would likely be standing too proud of the surface again and I'd be sanding too much of that down. And wet laying carbon fiber and vacuum bagging it would likely result in too much distortion of the flakes which would result in a furry looking surface which I don't want to have. Also, I've spoken to my man who built the bonnet uh, to see how he would go about this and to come up with a solid tactic uh, to get the finished product looking as perfect as possible. First of all, we don't want to have too much buildup on the surface while at the same time maintaining full coverage so we don't have uh, the black background shining through the carbon. And second of all, we don't want to spread too much at the time because I'll be applying the flakes when the surface has already gotten tacky and I want to really avoid tearing the flakes apart and leaving a fair mess behind as I said before. This is how regular carbon fiber skinning works, but compared to regular carbon fiber skinning where people don't tend to bag their items, I will be doing just that. Usually what happens when bagging carbon parts in high vacuum, you first go P-apply, then a perforated uh, release film, which is there to not dry out the surface too much. Then the breather cloth to soak up the excess and finally the bag itself. I'm going to be leaving out the P-apply entirely, it's like some pre preg carbon applications tend to do. And go straight with a perforated release film on the surface because the item will be rather dry to begin with. Anyway, enough talk, let's get going. So, first things first. As you can see there is, after sanding, the filler, there's a couple of spots that are lighter than others and ideally before applying the carbon, as in the forged carbon flakes, you'd want to have a more uniform black background just in case there's a couple of spots that shine through the carbon uh, flakes. You, you don't have different sort of colors in the background. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, just apply a coat of actual primer and see if it's better afterwards. So just to reiterate, what I've used before was a filler which you can send back in order to get flat surfaces and right now all I'm going to do is just pop on some primer in order to get a more uniform looking surface. after a simple coat of primer and now that it's more uniform looking we can start with the actual application of the epoxy and the carbon but first I'll prep all the bagging consumables to have it ready to go
how the epoxy coat is applied and we're gonna have to wait for like 90 minutes until it becomes really sticky and then we can just start applying the carbon flakes all right let's have a look yeah this is getting pretty sticky now so we can start applying the carbon flakes now which are right over here From what I understand, this is just simple chopped toe carbon and is being used like this nowadays as a form of uh, recycling. I don't mind, it's gonna look great. Let's do it. Okay then, eight hours have passed and the epoxy has hardened now and I hope that most flakes I threw on remain stuck to it. Um, I guess it's time to start un unwrapping this now. But considering only very little epoxy was used, there might be quite a few loose flakes still. Anyway, let's unpack. <laughs> It's looking amazing. This is an amazing first coat. The coverage is pretty nice. So now I'm gonna be putting on some more epoxy and maybe another thin layer of flakes in order to get full coverage. If you look here, there's a sh some shiners, but other than that, as soon as this is getting more coats of epoxy and sand it down. This should be pretty perfect.
wetted out all of the carbon and it has now fully hardened. The next step is going to be sanding everything down. So that's what I'm going to start with right now. Let's bring it outside. Now, this is where we're at. I've sanded down the entire bumper with 6 grit, which is a tiny bit aggressive. Which is why I'm gonna give uh, the entire bumper another once over with 120 grit before applying about 2 to 3 coats of epoxy. And I'll be waiting around about 2 hours between coats so that the previous coat becomes tacky before adding the next one. That should give me a solid build up so I can sand it all flat after this round. And let's see how it goes. Let's bring it inside. skipped over one round of sanding and another round of epoxy because the video is going to be long enough as it is but this is how it looks now now I gotta try and sand this flat completely and to give you an idea I gave this a quick once over with 60 grit and all of that has to be sanded down just probably gonna take me a day or two the process of sanding the bumper flat with all its corners and edges took me a good two days and at times I honestly started wondering why I'm doing this. It's been a painful process to say the least. Honestly I wouldn't do it again on a bumper like that but for other flatter surfaces this process is fairly easy and straightforward. That is why I'm still gonna do it on my fenders the same way which you will see in upcoming videos. After sanding the bumper down and fixing a few spots that I sanded too far, I coated the bumper with a clear filler that I could just apply in my regular spray gun. It does look pretty nice now, but the last step will be sanding the bumper in a finer grit like 600 and giving it a few good coats of clear paint. Anyway, I hope you like seeing the process behind this. Let me now show you the result and stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Bye.